the education system of Finland is popular across the world. According to the Educating for the Future Index published by The Economist, Finland has been ranked number one as the best country in the world for education. India does not even figure on this list. So what's the difference between the Indian and the Finnish education system and why is Finland ranked so high in their education system? Education is free for everyone in Finland and we have a very student-focused education system. I have been teaching for a long time and therefore seen the system firsthand. So let's do a comparison of each level of the education systems. For this educational analysis, we are not considering India's National Education Policy 2020. Now, it's still being implemented, so it will take some time. We might reference it later on. So for primary schools, they begin very early in India. So in the primary schools, kids as young as two to three years old sometimes can go ahead and start their education. And some will even start earlier than that. So we have the preschool and kids as young as 18 months to 20 months, they will start their education. So primary school, it leads into the first standard or class one, it is called, and it continues till class five. So that is the entire length of the primary school. And it has to be noted that every school student needs to wear the school uniforms and strict discipline is enforced. So this continues regardless of the level of education, except in college where they do not have uh, usually any kind of uniforms, though some colleges actually enforce that too. Students in this stage of their education are not allowed to carry mobile phones. And in general, the focus is on memorizing and not on application. And this is true not just for primary school, but almost all the levels of education. In the Indian system, you are memorizing a lot of data and it's always those kinds of questions which are asked in the examinations, not questions that ask you to apply your knowledge. Homework is very important and students are punished if they do not complete it on time. Private schools are very popular. Most of the government schools don't provide the best quality of education and so parents choose to enroll kids into private schools that are much more expensive. Every aspect of having a good education is very costly, although the Right to Education Act of 2009 made education free in government schools till 14 years of age. But in practice, there are still many issues. Primary and upper primary kids get free midday meals at government schools. Once a day, they are served meals, which has helped some poor families to educate their children. However, a vast section of the Indian population still has a hard time getting education. This did not used to be a problem in the earlier days. There used to be some institutions called Gurukuls in ancient India. Education in those Gurukuls was mostly free and they only had to pay a small fee by the name of Guru Dakshina. So that was ancient India. However, along the way, India has lost her ancient tradition and these days education can be a very costly affair. In Finland, the actual school starts at the age of seven and before that there is one year of preschool that's obligatory. Before that, kids are often in kindergartens because the parents work, but those are not considered school. Schools are very informal, kids wear what they like Smaller kids wear comfortable clothes and teenagers want to wear fashionable clothes. There's no calling your teachers Mr. or Mrs. in Finland. Smaller kids often just use the Finnish word teacher and the older ones can use their first names. Schools don't give you a lot of homework. I was asking an 11 year old girl who's on grade five and she said that it never takes her more than 20 minutes to complete her homework after school. Mobile phones can be a problem in many schools. More or less all kids have them with them all the time. And they are also used in teaching, so they can bring them to class. But they are not supposed to use those for social media and watching films or whatever during class. Parents want their kids to have the phones because most children go home before their parents return from work. So that way they can keep in touch with the kids and see what they are doing at home. This is what schools look like. Often children's art and projects displayed on walls. Here are some views from playgrounds. School days are short. 
For example, an 11-year-old has five hours of classes a day, but that includes four breaks outside. It is very important for children to go outside often, because that also helps learning. Right from the start, many children come and go to school on their own. Almost all education in Finland is free, and there are very few private schools. The ones we have are based on some philosophy like Steiner or Montessori schools. In basic education also books are free and everybody gets a free meal during the school days. So no lunch boxes in Finland. There is a lot of emphasis of children learning to find information themselves and they also work in groups a lot. The definition of middle school in India varies a lot because we have a lot of different boards of education. The most famous ones are the ICSC and the CBSC. We also have the IB or the different international boards apart from the state specific boards. So these are all present together and usually people go for lots of state specific boards for each Indian state. So usually middle school continues from class 6 up to class 10 and the study pressure increases quite a lot during this phase of a child's education. The first board exam happens at class 10 and it is a very serious affair. Students are expected to study a lot to get good grades in it since the future depends on these grades. These marks that they score here are used in many college admissions and also job applications. A similar exam also happens in class 12. The 10 plus 2 system is now being changed, however, and in the new education policy, we are going to see a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system that is expected to reduce the pressure on students. After six years in the primary school, up till the age of 12 or 13, kids move to middle school or as it is called higher school, not high school, and uh, that lasts for three years. Our system is comprehensive. So there is only one type of middle school. There are some choices kids need to make, like what languages, but basically it's similar to all. And there are also arts and crafts and sports and music and cooking on top of the academic subjects. The middle school is often considered to be the hardest by teachers because the pupils at that time are at their worst teenage years. They may not always behave very well and also have various types of problems. And also kids in Finland are not afraid to confront their teachers. After class 10, you have a very important decision to make in India. You have to decide which stream you want to pursue. And you have very few choices. Either you can go for the science stream or you can go for the commerce stream or for the humanity stream. These three are the most important streams. There are a few other choices, but nobody actually goes for that. Society does not really value that too much. So it's a very important decision. And usually uh, the students are not matured enough to decide on their own. So their parents uh, usually help them. And uh, it's not always smooth sailing because uh, the student might be wanting something else while their parents are wanting something totally different. In a sense, your life's trajectory is decided upon what you choose. A lot of students end up choosing the science stream even though they might not be geared towards it. And of course, vocational streams are looked down upon. And the main problem is that the vocational streams like the plumbing, carpentry, electrician jobs, etc. All these things are seen to be lesser than something like an engineering job. So that is a social problem that India is still struggling through. And of course, the new education policy is trying to change it, but they cannot really change the salary aspect very easily. So unless the salaries are quite equivalent, then it's very difficult to go for those vocational jobs. After class 9, at the age of 16, you need to choose between high school and vocational training. Vocational college certificate now also allows admittance to universities and colleges later on. 
Training for practical jobs like electrician, builder, business administration, hairdresser, security guard, practical nurse, cook, etc. are traditionally less valued, but their value is rising all the time. They also take three years of training after you are 16, or you can also go for those any time later in life. University education is not free. In India, you need a lot of money to study in the private universities, a little lesser in the government universities, but the private ones can be very, very costly. No one can afford to take any breaks in their education because if you have a gap in your education, it is seen in a poor light by future employers. The new education policy does allow for some breaks, but we need to understand that this is a societal problem. In fact, even when the students are actually studying in their undergraduate courses, they are often preparing for their postgraduate examinations, other competitive examinations and all different types of things by which they can progress in their career. Nobody likes to waste time, as they say, by taking a year off. So personal activities often suffer and people are always on that rat race. They are going for the next thing all the very time. And people who cannot do that suffer from depression and other problems. But the problem is so many students are trying for a limited number of seats and not everybody can make it. Indians are often high achievers and a lot of intelligent Indians decide to leave the country for some prominent opportunities abroad. And we have seen that all the top companies of the world, many of them in fact, have CEOs at the top who are Indian. Of course, some of these CEOs have been educated abroad, but quite a few of them have only an Indian education. They have been accustomed to working very hard and hence they excel in their careers. But people who cannot keep up, for them it becomes very difficult. And so at the end what happens is that if you are not at the very top, then you are going to suffer, you are going to be thrown by the wayside. That is a problem. Excellence is rewarded and being average is looked down upon. Universities are free in Finland and each student also gets a monthly study grant from the government as well as housing allowance. Many young people take a year or more off after finishing school and before starting to study. They work or maybe they travel and they just want to take the time to consider what they really want to do. Some take classes in open university to see what they like. It's not easy to get to study what you want. So many people need to apply on several years to get to their favorite place of study and do something else in between. Many students spend an exchange term in a foreign university. There are many scholarships for that and other financial help, as well as you continue to get your study grant. So this is available to everyone, regardless of finances. One detail of the Finnish student life is that many girlfriends and boyfriends live officially together during the study years, and this is completely acceptable socially in Finland. The Indian job market is very difficult to crack. Unless you are the best of the best, it's very difficult to get a job, a decent job. And that is why there is a lot of emphasis on placements and there are placement directors for each and every college. And it is their responsibility to help the students get a job. So students sometimes become very dependent on them and they do not go out for internships. They do not go out and seek things themselves and they are expecting things to be handed down to them on a platter and this actually is an issue because when they step out into the real world they understand that this is not how the real world actually works. Job prospects vary a lot from one profession to another. Internship work is necessary for most degrees and some students get a job already from that internship work either during their studies or after it. Many students already work in their profession during their studies and that's something that tends to drag out, especially finishing your final thesis. 
But mostly graduates need to get a job just the same way as anybody else. You apply for jobs, you hope to get an interview and then to get the job. All throughout my life, I have been a straight A student. I have scored high marks in almost every examination. But then over the years, I realized that that is not the key to success. In fact, I noticed that in my personal experience, most of my friends who were very average at school, they are now in top positions and they have made their life in the way that they wanted. So education is not the only thing that guarantees success. And this is what I want to leave you with. So I don't know how many of you will be agreeing with my opinion and sure you can write down your opinion in the comments down below. But I feel that to actually become a well educated person, you have to do things that are beyond studies. You have to actually work on your personal development, on your life and you have to live in a way that you are learning from each and everything and not just books that are just part of some small curriculum. Real life is much bigger than any curriculum that any board of examinations can design. The goal of education at all levels is for every individual to be able to find their full potential and put that to use in their life, for themselves and for the society they live in. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button and share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell so you won't miss our next video. See you on the next one.